seconds, right? Minute or, yeah, 30 seconds. Or 30 seconds. All right, that's all right. Wait your letter of support. And, uh, <laughs> okay. Um, what do we have? Tax roll corrections. Uh -huh. And. A letter of support. This is just a consensus. Uh -huh. um, I gave you a copy of the letter that Joe sent. Yes, um, today. Requesting the Attorney General opinion. Uh, and uh, Steve, I assume, will be in about the salary increase. I hope he will. Cause Is that, on, is that on appeal? Must those get corrected? Or? I'm. I would have to ask the appraiser's office those come through him. I don't know. I know he's made some adjustments on some of those properties. And then a lot of the oil is splitting out. Grandma's share of only 15. Because they all can't share that same tax statement. They all want their own. Yeah. So. So we still have a couple of townships that have intangible tax. Um, they, um, oh, I have to There's like two. One of the Coopers is the one that killed me. No. No? Um, Three dollars. <laughs> yeah, it's not worth Carl's time. Yeah. I make a motion to approve tax roll corrections. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. So we accept the tax roll corrections. All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carried. You notice that we got a letter of support from Barton County. Um, we're going to apply for a grant. We're a scenic outlook on K4, so. Okay, just consensus that. We support them in their efforts. Agree. Okay. Um, anything at the moment? We'll recess. Uh, I only had a couple things, and, and actually, there's only the one thing on the agenda, and that was a salary stuff uh, request increase for um, for Misty Blake Slick. And uh, Misty serves as the assistant on the uh, assistant right from the EMS side. She takes care of, the, of uh, all our medical building. Uh, we were going to meet with you this morning about that too, but uh, the hospital had it because we were going to meet with them 
uh, relative to them uh, taking over the collection process. Um, and they had a, a sick person and we weren't able to meet yesterday regarding that. We were busy and it turned out well. Uh, but we'll come back, uh, we'll probably try to get on the agenda and come back next week and visit about that. We've, we've met with the hospital the other day concerning that. We think we've got um, an idea on how to, how to move forward with that. But Misty's done a great job. She, uh, she's taught a couple of EMT classes for us. She's an instructor through the state. And, uh, and that's helped boost our, our numbers, uh, mostly here in St. John, which, which is nice. Because uh, being central located, it's, it's important to keep the middle, one in the middle staff, and we haven't been able to do that, uh, other than paid staff, for some time. So my recommendation to you is with me that we move to the next uh, step within our range. Move that we move Misty Blake's lead to the next step in our pay rating, which would be range six, step six. I second that. Okay, it's been moved and seconded that we uh, approve the step increase from step six, or range six to step six for Misty Blake's lead. All in favor say aye. All right, aye. aye. Motion carried. And I didn't put this on the agenda, so I'm, I'm not going to visit this out this morning, but I thought I'd just uh, distribute that. Uh, we, we've done, uh, had a uh, random uh, drug and alcohol program for human mass in the past. When I came here, um, I, in my past I hadn't, but uh, it, it is becoming pretty uh, pretty much a market thing in, in society in general with, with drugs. And, so I think it, it, it only stands to reason that we would um, have. I, I don't want to get it real costly for the county, though. And uh, uh, so, but, but I think if we're going to do it for you, that's going to do it for fire. Mm -hmm. uh, but it would be very, very minimal as far as. Uh, but at least having a program, if I have somebody that I kind of suspect, we can at least address it. And I think uh, with, the, with as widespread as drug use it is right now, I think we probably better do something. So. Um, I'll just, I just kind of type something up in a, in a sample policy and I'll visit with it next week about that. Okay. I don't know if you have, uh, if you have time this morning to uh, adjourn for just a, a moment and take a look at the two trucks. We, we went and got them yesterday. They're right out here. Sure. Uh, I did. We'll, we'll recess. Okay. Got this yesterday. Um, We've been working with the State Animal Health Department uh, for about a month now. We're going to host a emergency responder program. It's one of three in the state this year. <coughs> and it'll be in the annex on the 28th. And I've taken it around to the local police departments, sheriff, and uh, to the cities. And we're going to email it out too. But they've sent it out to a whole list of people. And also uh, veterinarians. There are some credit hours for veterinarians and stuff too. But <coughs> Excuse me, clogged up here. Um, but just thought you ought to be aware of it because if we would have an emergency like foreign animal disease, foot and mouth, it would basically shut down the whole county. Everybody would become involved. I mean, anybody with a loader, tractor, <laughs> a resource to hold yeah. animals. So I thought you ought to be aware of it. If you are interested in attending, there will be a meal. Uh, there's no charge. You do need to either call the number on there or go online and register for it, though, by the 5th, uh, 15th, of the date. Mm -hmm. Now, I talked to her yesterday, even yeah. though they only went out uh, Monday, I guess they went out Monday, she said we were the second largest response already. Oh, yeah. So, Fe the, February 18th for St. John. Oh, yeah, so 18th, okay. 18th? Yeah, it's to, to register. Oh, uh, yeah. To register. Okay. It's the 28th, though. Like I say, good. it'll be in the courthouse, or I mean, in the uh, annex in the big room. I talked to Meet earlier about getting that set up and as far as reserving it. So, but they're expecting, uh, they said last year when they did these, they had close to 50 people and they've already, like I say, within two days, I think she said there's 20, 25 already signed up for it. So, but like I say, we're veterinarians, you can get seven hours of credit for it. And there was a letter separate that went out to vets, looked just like that one, except they told us about their credit hours. So we should pick up a lot of veterinarians and some other people too, I would think. But like I said, I thought you ought to be aware of it going in. Because like I said, if it was, it probably would be a thing where 
I know when we did the Foreign Animals Disease meetings and put together those committees several years ago, um, when with the State Health Department and Animal Health, it was basically, the, I mean, they said a record or so one time, there was like 500,000 head of cattle on the road at any one time in the state. And it, uh, so <coughs> it would be basically finding a place to put those animals and locating them and finding homes and, let's say, if you had to destroy them. It would involve probably everybody in the county type thing. Is this something Bill to go to? It probably wouldn't hurt. Steve? I took it to Steve Have already. Okay. Yeah, I took it to Steve. Is Philip now? I have not taken it to Philip. Um, but if you'd like to, I can give him a copy of it. I have not got that far with it yet. Yeah, you might got one. Okay. But like I said, I dropped it off by the sheriff's office, took it over to Stafford to the police department. Um, <coughs> I think we're else here. I uh, sent one. We've got a couple of vets that are close by that have sent some stuff to. I emailed it out to them because I would like those on email. I'm going to email out to our producer list we have. So, if any producers, because there are some that probably should be in us, you know, especially the feedlots and like the, some of the swine producers and things. Those specialists. But I just wanted to make sure you're aware of that. And if you're interested, I'm glad to have you back. I've got a question for you. Yes. Did they ever do anything with you know, the hot subject a few years ago was permanent identification of animals. <laughs> Have they just kind of forgot about no, that? No, there's a new, some new regulations that they just came out with. They're still, I think, in committee. Um, but hopefully in the next few months, they're going to have tags that can be put in. But they don't have to be put in by the producer. They can be put in by a veterinarian. Like if you haul your cattle to a sale barn, they can be put in okay. there. Um, but they will be traced back. They will have to have the traceability back to them. But it's not quite like it was several years ago. There a couple of years ago it was. And like the uh, sheep, they have to have the, uh, well, we call them the scrapies tags, but they're the federal tags. Any, any sheep and goat that is intact over a certain age, female or male, has to have that in it. And that's why we've had saying at the county fair, that's one of our requirements, and that's come from the state that they have to have that scrapies tag in their ear in order to exhibit at the fair because of traceability and coming back. Um, but it's coming there because there a couple of years ago, Farm Bureau got into the mix of, and I think they've kind of dropped out of it because they were going to do a record keeping database, sell tags, and put them in and keep all that information, but it just never. Like say you drop out of yeah, sight. I never hear too much about it anymore. Yeah, because like yeah, they wanted originally when this all like some of the foreign animal disease and the BSE and that stuff hit, they were talking that they wanted to be able within 24 hours to trace back where that animal originally came, came from. from. Yeah. And uh, so it is a big concern. And with the animal agriculture here, I mean it would just devastate the county or the state if something like that would happen. And it would be easy to do because that's why a lot of the feedlots and places have locked down where you can't get in without going through the main office first. But where these feedlots settle on the road, it would be fairly easy for someone to cause some havoc because a lot of these are airborne, airborne pathogens that you just basically throw it out the windows you drive by if somebody wanted to cause an issue. So. Yeah, I didn't think much of it at the time, but I do. On something like this, it'd be a good idea to be able to trace it back. But yeah, because we, uh, like I say, when this all started several years ago, we worked with Dr. Sam Graham from the Animal Health Department, and we put together a committee. This was back, well, actually before Jason Bolt was here, because I was chairman of that committee, and then when Jason came, we turned all that information over to him. And there is a plan in place somewhere. I don't know where it is now. Like I said, that was. But it, I'm sure it probably still it had to be sent to the state also. But it lists producers who are in charge of doing this, finding locations for the animals. We have to go through and basically do a survey of the county who has uh, who has backhoes, who has bulldozers, uh, who has uh, lots that would be available to handle animals if. We had to shut down because if there was something ever happened, they shut it down at the state line. Nothing, and basically those cattle, wherever they're at at that time, stop. They don't go any farther unless they're going to slaughter. If they're transported to slaughter, they can go ahead and take them to the slaughter plants. But if you had a load of cows on your truck, you basically got to take them to the lowest, closest place, and that's where they go. They have to stay until they find out they have to be destroyed or not, and that's a matter of 
finding a place to dig a hole and dispose of them. And so it, like I say, it could be devastating. At that time, like I say, the county was involved, <coughs> the bridge guys, because they probably have to be responsible for setting up barricades, because there was, I mean, it was like within a so many mile radius of wherever the location was, it had to be shut down, nobody in and out. Uh, working with the uh, health, local health department, they had to find, uh, work with them on finding like um, things to sterilize the equipment, uh, power washers, sterilants, and the county was basically responsible for 24 hours until the state and fed could get here. And so it was kind of a scary deal. It was, it was, like I say, it was going to involve a lot of people in the county, but it would never happen. You know, because like I said, we've got a, like I said, there was a list somewhere that the producers that had little feedlots, what the capacity was, so if we needed a home, this is where they go. And I don't have a feedlot. <laughs> <laughs> but there are producers that were contacted, they would be in charge of finding panels and portable corrals, other producers, I mean, there's lots, I mean, who was a producer, we had about 30, 40 producers showing up at these meetings, and they were ones responsible for helping locate facilities, locating the panels, Water tanks, stuff that keep the animals alive until they decide what they actually had to do with them. Mm -hmm. Because at that time, all the tests had to be sent to uh, New York, Plum Island. That's where the federal lab was. Mm -hmm. Now it's going to be moving up to Manhattan if they ever, when they get a building. <laughs> if they get a building, well, they broke ground. But that will be the new lab there. But <clears throat> so, and I know the animal health department. They've got a trade. You might have seen they have stayed here for years at trailer that. They brought in that had like a load shoe where they run the cattle up, you had to euthanize them, and then pick them up on the side and haul them to the hole. So there's quite a deal. So, but like I said, I thought you'd be interested in it. just came in. I think I said yesterday, but it actually came on Monday. It was today. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you, man. Okay. Carolyn? She's here. No, no. she's an observer. She's an observer. Okay. okay. here to the minutes and let you know that um, a week from today on the 13th of February uh, economic development is having an annual meeting or open house of sorts for the public at 7 p.m. so you're definitely welcome um, I don't have the publication at this time but we'll have an annual report reviewing all the activities of the um, the year and, uh, 7 p.m. at the Annex Community Room. So, we've had a busy year. I've um, kind of been just drafting things to uh, lay out what I wanted to put in the publication. I had six pages of things that we've done through the year. So. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, I kind of try to look at things as population, school enrollment, tax base as key indicators that we're making progress and one of the things that I felt kind of good about whether it's truly to the credit of economic development or not but last this year we had school enrollment that was steady or up in all three school districts and that's the first time that that's happened since 1996-97 school year which I had easily accessed to records students probably didn't even longer than that so mm -hmm. there have been years when one school district was up or whatever but not across the board that there was some some stabilization and even an increase. So, um, one of the things that, um, you know, some of the training that I've gone through kind of helped put into perspective what it takes to make a, an impact in economic development in rural areas. And a couple of statistics were that at any given time, there's an estimated 300,000 economic development entities vying for the same 300 site selection deals across the nation. So, the idea of the a rural town being competitive in one of those, your chances are pretty slim. You're better off working at with your existing businesses, adding a handful, you know, even one or two employees, expansion of some sort, or entrepreneurship, or uh, you know, alumni retention, that kind of thing. So the small things add up. And uh, and another way of putting that into perspective, um, our population declined about 10% over the period of. 2000 to 2010, that was what made us right there in the eligible for the Rural Opportunity Zone incentives. Mm -hmm. so that's 350 people over the course of that decade. 
you kind of boil it down, 35 people a year out of the county, you can boil it down a little more, 12 people on average for school district. If you could hold on to four of those students on average, you know, whether or not they go away and go to college or have experience somewhere, but on average, if you kept four people from your from each class and they marry and have a, a family, you know, they use a factor of a multiplying factor of four on average, and that they marry and have a couple of kids, one person's anchoring four people. So you really only or three people, three people in addition to themselves. You really only have to hold on to four people for that for each graduating class to maintain your population. If you kind of start boiling it down like that, then it seems a little more attainable and doable. doable. And when I say that we we worked with, you know, for example, we had um, five businesses participate in the e-community program, or um, four businesses went through coaching with Small Business Development Center. They're not big numbers, but when you put in your perspective that we only need to hold on to four or five people per year per school district, then I'd like to think that that's where we could be having some impact. So. Um, anyway, yeah, I, I guess I kind of saw it as the place to go through this. Um, we'll have a presentation um, next week, or if it's better for me to come to you and, and do that at the commission meeting, I can do that, and I'll have the published report ready for next week. So. <laughs> All, right. All right. Thank you. I, I have one quick question. In reading the article in the Hutch paper about the rural opportunities, and uh -huh. it said the county had to match half of the student loan forgiveness, yes. and some counties had a plan in place for that. What, yes. what is our plan? Yes. Um, it comes out of economic um, development's budget. So what the commission provides to economic right. development, the one mill levy, um, it was 82000 in 2012. Tax base is, is increased, but it's ninety. Um, and all of that comes out of our budget. We have budgeted for we have three participating right now okay, and a fourth forget. one has just qualified for 2013. Okay. We budgeted for more than actually that was part of our carryover because we've not we had we have budgeted I want to say for right at 10 thousand. Participants, they so can qualify for a few more. We do have room, yes. <laughs> and if we really had a rush of people, we'd probably start looking at our budget and seeing if we could move things around and accommodate another person if it really came to that. But we're not at that point yet. We had a few inquiries that didn't come to fruition. In fact, we had originally only budgeted five thousand. We thought we were going to have like three more, so we kind of moved things around our budget and we're ready. And then they ended up locating in Barton County. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, we have like we have three that had, that qualified for 2012. We have a fourth one that just moved to Maxville and qualified. They um, can get up to three thousand dollars a year paid toward their student loan debt. Um, one of those for five years, so up to fifteen thousand, of which. Okay. Half of it comes from the county. Um, we have one that doesn't quite have that much debt outstanding, so our payment for them doesn't quite hit that 1500 mark. So, mm -hmm. yeah. I just didn't know how that works. Yeah, so. and some counties have opted in and some haven't, or some have. I think Pratt, for example, opted in, but they're maxed out. In fact, we had an inquiry from someone that lives one mile over the line and we liked, we made the case that he does business in Stafford County and things like that. But Last week when <laughs> Carl was up here and kind of brought us up to date on some stuff he was working on, he brought up some greenhouses that you guys are working on. Can you fill us in on what you, what's going on with sure. that? Sure. That is a, um, a grant that we applied to, to for through the Kansas Department of Agriculture. It's called the Specialty Crop Block Grant and its purpose is to increase specialty crop production. Um, the proposal we put together uh, was 
to increase commercial production of vegetables. You know, I, I kind of catch to some people, you know, there are places that apply for that and their purpose is more research oriented, for example. We're not research oriented. We want to increase jobs and economic growth. So ours is to stimulate the um, establishment of commercial businesses. Um, so we receive funding um, to basically do a market analysis of what kind of commercial opportunities are available in the immediate area, um, provide training, uh, crop consulting assistance, and the high tunnel structure itself. A high tunnel is an unheated greenhouse. So you might be heard of them as hoop houses before. Um, they're intended to extend the uh, growing season in this area. It's roughly 10 months a year, so it's not, they're not heated. They don't heat, you know, produce all through the year, but um, it extends it, and um, we have five participants. That we had a process where there was a, um, they had to apply and compete. We had 10 applicants, and the board chose the five to participate. Um, two are from the Seward area, roughly. One is um, in Hudson, one's in St. John, and the other one is near Stafford. So it was also kind of something that I felt like it's kind of hard to find those things that can fit with all of the small towns we have. You know, there's limited ways you can develop business in some areas, but this is the kind of thing that you can do anywhere. So that was um, one way that we were in other parts of the, you know, rural parts of the county. But um, they are in the process now of planning. We have ordered the, the high tunnels. And yes, they need to have permits before they That's establish them, <laughs> set them up. But um, we've communicated with them all and, and so they know that they have to have that. Not all cases will they have to have permits because their use of land may be already, or they may be using it for that same type of purpose now. But in one case, for sure, he's definitely going to have to go through a hearing. Now, you know? But I, they've been all well done. Carl and I, we, but I think it's all worked out. You know? <laughs> Nothing's built yet. <laughs> I wasn't clear on what I needed to do. But anyway. It's a learning decision. So these, I mean, to get this clear in my head, I guess, these will be owned by you guys? No, they will be, be owned, owned by, by the people. The people. Why the yes. They, um, the board chose to. Mm -hmm. They have to, they, they've signed an agreement um, that they have to, you know, meet the expectations of the program. I mean, they have to grow vegetables there and then she can't use it for a garage or something better that will become our greenhouse. <laughs> we'll take it back. <laughs> but no, I mean... That's yeah, I'm just curious. I mean, because you, you get... Well, we get bombarded by questions that once that greenhouse still come out in the paper, it was brought to our, my attention real fast. So what's going on with that? And who's doing that? Oh, I have okay. But I will ask questions to try to find out. Sure. So. Um, so yeah, its purpose is to stimulate some business, and and people tend to respond to an incentive. So it's an incentive yeah. to um, to start that. And we, you know, our focus in the survey that we did of, of uh, market demand was very much focused on commercial um, buying. Uh, you know, we kind of said that if you find opportunities in farmers markets, which I think a lot of times you hear a lot of focus of farmers markets for locally grown produce. If you find outlets for that, that's great. It's just that it's so seasonal that it's hard to see how that um, produces a year-round job. And um, so we've been more focused on trying to help them know what the requirements are for selling to warehouses or just, you know, year-round commercial buyers. What kind of um, certifications you need, whether it be HACCP or CAP or whatever else. Um, and we're, we're just trying to help them get established so that in year two and beyond, when economic development isn't going to be involved at all, it's going to be their thing to continue, that they have um, had a good start and can. So after it's established, they report to you on the They'll basis. report to us through this year, for, through this, one year, this one year period. And beyond that, our part of it will be finished. Okay. okay.
the lights being on if there's an event there or something, but I mean to say that we need them on. And these are where in the lobby? Or? All the lights. The exterior lights. The lights in the front, the lights in the back, the lights all over it. The lights in the, there's a hallway light on the whole length of the building. The, some of the lobby lights are on. All the lights in the front. Are they on timer or I don't know. I mean, it's been told to me they're on all the time. The, the inside lights are in motion, but the yeah. outside ones are on all the time. The dark day and night. They just yeah. think it's the people that it was exp explained to me that it's unnecessary. I can see how the lights on a few of the entrances on the motion switches, but I mean, I, or if there's an event going on, I mean, I can see having the front lights. And the exterior lights on, but I mean, it does seem a little bit. Are they concerned about the light or the amount of energy we're using? Mm -hmm. Both. I mean, the light they think it's unnecessary that oh. it's <laughs> eliminated as it is. So I said I would bring it up. And those are pretty small lights. I mean, like on the sidewalk? Yeah, up in the front. Even this morning they were on because it was still pretty dark. Yeah, yeah but not all of them were on. I mean, some of them. I mean, there's like every other. Yeah, but yeah, there's one or two that wasn't. But I just, I mean, to me, it's a waste if if the place isn't open and you know it's not like the dispatch where there's somebody in the dis sheriff's office all the time and that you know it's not lit up like the annex is or you know the. Courthouses and put up like the annex. We do leave the outside lights on. Right. In, on the side doors. On the side doors. Right. I don't, I don't know. know. That's. It was brought up to me, and I brought it up. I told him I would we'd discuss it. Put it on the agenda and discuss well, we can it. Look at it. See what. Yeah. There may be the. You know, there's been times that the motion light has stuck. Right. Because they're supposed to be on. The, there's a 10 minute delay, and maybe those things are out of adjustment or something. I can understand if they're on at 10 o'clock at night in the hallways well, the, and stuff. Which hallway, they, I wonder? Somebody said it was the one that runs on the, is it one that runs on the west side? Well, that's all extension office on the west side. So it's possible they just didn't get it turned off that time. Okay, I don't know. Because, see, the west is all extension. But there's a lot of little lights outside that right. are on. Those little bullet-looking yeah. things. Yeah. yeah, I don't know how they run. Those are little LED lights. And they're not, yeah, they're not yeah. going to use much energy. One other thing you can do is put them on a timer or some sort to shut them off. We'll get somebody yes. to look at 10 or 11 o'clock at night or something. Obviously, I don't drive around and say <laughs> yeah, no, I, so yeah, I, yeah, I didn't, even, I didn't yeah. even look till this morning when I pulled up. Well, I saw them. They were a few of them were on this morning. A few of them were on it, yeah. but there were some, some of them that weren't. There wasn't any yeah. rhyme or reason to the ones that were off. I thought maybe they were having trouble with a few of them. Okay, we'll get some mail. Okay. So I would move that we approve the minutes from the last meeting. I second that. I didn't sign a second. second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Probably 
15 minutes of an executive session to discuss non-elected personnel. Okay. Is that a motion? Yeah. I'll uh, put that in front of the motion. Sorry. Okay. okay. Then in a second, we're going to a 15 minute executive session to d discuss non-elected personnel. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Aye. We're. Anything? No. Nope. 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 Okay. We'll just adjourn. We're adjourned.